Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar, and this video is gonna explain the differences between metric modulation and implied metric modulation. Now, there are a lot of conflicting views on how this works. A lot of people view this a lot of different ways. This is the way that just works for me. This isn't the end all be all. This is how I perceive it. Works for me, it works for a lot of my students, so I hope you can get a lot out of it. Let's get to it. Now, for those of you who are unclear, a metric modulation essentially is gonna be speeding up or slowing down, usually relative to the previous feel in some way. So with actual versus implied metric modulation, it's right there in the name. With metric modulation, we're actually gonna speed up. The pulse will change, our tempo will change with it. And for implied metric modulation, it's really a trick. We're gonna pretend that we're gonna speed up or slow down by basing phrasing off a different subdivision. So it's a trick for our listener or an illusion, or even for our band if we feel like being jerks. So for implied metric modulation, there's a couple ways that we can go about phrasing this. The first way we're gonna talk about is with a forced resolve. Now what I mean by that is that in the example ahead, our modulated beat is equivalent to six quarter notes in duration to play through what was originally four quarter notes, a bar four four. So I'm going to just stuff that into four bars. So we're gonna play four bars of the regular beat and four bars of this modulated beat. Now it's not gonna end up where beat one coincides at the end of this phrase. So I'm gonna to have to start beat one in the middle of our implied bar. Now, notice my left foot plays quarter notes on the hi-hat throughout this. So count four, and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Another option for phrasing these is to use a natural resolve. You may have noticed that within the modulation that we were just playing, the beat is equal to six quarter notes. So, well, my first thought is that we can do three bars of four four, and that will just resolve back on beat one. So let's take the eight bar phrase again, but I'm gonna play an extra bar of the original beat. So it's gonna be five bars of the original beat, three bars of the implied metric modulated beat, and we're gonna line right back up on beat one at the beginning of the phrase. Another example of how we can resolve this naturally would be taking a four bar phrase and starting our modulation on beat three of the third bar. Six quarter notes long brings us right back to beat one from a four bar phrase. Let's check it out. You may have noticed in these previous examples that my right hand against my left foot, which was playing quarter notes as the pulse, we were playing a four over three polyrhythm. Now that's totally a valid way to perceive these. It's like we are taking a polyrhythm and basing grooves inside their polyrhythmic phrasing. So again, we're not speeding up or slowing down. We're just pretending to, it's an illusion, it's a trick. All right, for actual metric modulation, there's a number of ways that we can go about feeling these as well. So. The first way we're gonna talk about is a way that I don't necessarily recommend. Uh, it's by doing just a tempo change, just a BPM change. Now, for the examples in this video, I purposely picked BPMs that worked. So for the original example, like the regular groove, the starting groove, we're gonna be playing at 150 BPM. Now, to do the exact same modulation we were doing in the implied thing, but for real, we're essentially just gonna drop it down to 100 BPM. It works out exactly the same. 
However, this for real is our new tempo. We're not doing an illusion. This is just a tempo shift and we modulated down to 100 BPM and it happens to be relative to what we did previously. Now, another way we can do it is how Gavin Harrison refers to a related tempo where in our new tempo, the eighth note spacing from the new bar, the slower bar, is relative to a dotted eighth note or a 316 spacing from the original bar. Another way we can check it out also is with polyrhythmic phrasing. So if you can easily perceive polyrhythms, you can totally use that as a way to pitch your new tempo based on the polyrhythmic phrasing that you are gonna apply. So I hope this helped you guys understand the difference between metric modulation and implied metric modulation. Again, as I said previously, this isn't the end all be all of these concepts. This is just how I perceive it and how I go about it. So if you're still unclear, please leave me a comment or private message me and just let me know what is confusing about this to you. Because I mean, I can't help you if you don't tell me what your issue is. And I would love to make sure that everybody understands how to do these. So I purposely didn't get into any, you know, how to play metric modulations within this video because I'm going to have a bunch of videos coming up past this that are definitely going to get into that. So as always, subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye.